And now, a tale well calculated to keep you in... Suspense. Listen now to Act One of Witness to Murder, starring Joan Loring and Leon Jenny, and written especially for Suspense by Francis Rickett. The stewards will direct you, sir. Just follow that way. Bonjour, Monsieur le Commandant. Bonjour, Madame. Espérons, Madame. Oh, Larry, Come on, Louise. Everything will be all right. Good morning, Captain. Good morning, sir. Watch your step here, madam. Why, it's Mrs. Meredith. Yes, I am. Welcome aboard. Yes, I am. Thank you. And this must be Mr. Meredith. Oh, yes, I'm so sorry. Um, I, uh, Larry, this is uh, Captain Woodbridge. Glad to meet you, Captain. How do you do, sir? I want to thank you for taking such good care of my wife on the trip over. We were happy to do what we could. I'm pleased to see her looking so well. Yes. I mean, uh, thank you. I... First, I remember thinking only that it was a mistake that we should have gone home some other way. Or at least on some other ship. How could I have been such a fool not to realize how humiliating it would be to face all those people again? To see them look at me and remember. To feel them point me out and know they were whispering about me, watching every move I made for the first sign of something queer. Didn't Captain Woodbridge say something to the man beside him as we walked away? Wouldn't they all be saying something to the ones beside them as I walked by? Well, they wouldn't get a chance to. Because I wasn't going to stay. We'd get off the ship, find another one. It wasn't fair to expect me to... Even as I thought it, I felt the ship begin to move. And I knew it was too late. I'll have to ask the steward to... Louise, what on earth's the matter? Larry, I can't face all these people. Oh, nonsense. What to face them about? <gasps> Larry, how can you say that? Now, Louise, listen to me. You're letting your imagination run away with you. There must be 2,000 passengers on this ship. You don't know them and they don't know you. But the stewards... All the right. People... A couple of stewards know who you are and... Some of the wacky things you did coming over. Do you I... think you're the only woman in the world who's ever had a nervous breakdown on an ocean voyage? Do you think in the three months since then they haven't had a couple of other passengers flip their lids? Mary! Oh, I, I'm sorry, but you might as well face it, Louise. You needn't put it in those terms. I said I was sorry. And you needn't have put me through this either. You could have booked passage on another ship. We could have flown home. I told you these were the only accommodations we could get. We're not the only people trying to get home from Europe. We were darn lucky to get anything at all. Besides, I think it's just as well we are on this ship. Why? Larry, what are you getting at? I'm not getting at anything. But you know I'm practically all well. The doctor said so. Of course I know it. It's just that if anything should happen... Nothing is going to happen. If you should get sick... If I get sick, I'll know I'm getting sick. You didn't know it last time. Oh, please, Larry. Now, Louise, let's don't start that again. Start what again? If I'd thought you weren't well enough to make the trip, we wouldn't be making it, would we? Well, would we? No, I guess not. Yeah, that's better. Now, the thing for you to do is to forget all about the things that have been bothering you the past few months and forget all this nonsense about the people on the ship and just have a pleasant, restful trip home. Yes, all right. All right. Oh, and uh, by the way, Louise, if the steward comes in... Yes. If I were you, I'd lay off the uh, French bit. Lay off the... What do you mean? Well, I don't suppose the captain thought anything about it, and probably the steward wouldn't either, but... Well, after all, that was the start of your trip.
trouble last time. What? And it might give people the wrong idea. Harry, what are you talking about? Now, Louise, don't get worked up. I merely said take it easy on the uh, French. I haven't spoken one word of it. Larry, for the love of God, don't look at me like that. You don't remember what you said to Captain Woodry? When I... But I didn't say anything. Oh, Larry, that was the woman ahead of us. She was speaking French. I remember, I remember what she said, something about a pleasant trip. Larry, I hardly said anything at all, only yes and thank you. I, I couldn't have. I'd remember it. Larry, I didn't. Did I? Look, Louise, it, it really doesn't matter. Larry. I just thought it would be better for you if you stayed away from it. Answer and me. I've only upset you, so we won't say anything more about it. Larry, please. I sat there and my mind went back frantically over our arrival aboard ship. Every step of it, every word of it. Larry was wrong. He had to be. If I had said something, I'd remember it, wouldn't I? The other time I... Yes, the other time. I forced myself to think back to the day three months ago when I boarded this same ship in New York when all I could think of was that I was free of Larry at last and on my way to Paris free and alone. Well, not quite alone. I would, I would be sharing my cabin with another woman. I remember that I had only been there a few moments when she came in. Oh, hello. I guess we're going to be roommates. Bonjour, madame. Bonjour. Oh, I see. You're getting into the spirit of it already. Well, I'm Helen Blake. You're uh, Mrs. Meredith? Oui, madame. Oh, dear. Now, that means yes, doesn't it? I'm afraid that's about the extent of my French. Yes, and no, and hello. I suppose you speak it very well. Oh, je pense que je le parle bien, mais... Mais pas souvent que je la pratique. Well, I don't have the remotest idea what you said, but I guess it answers my question. You'll have to give me a few tips before we get there, so I'll at least be able to get by. Oh, ce n'est pas difficile. Les Français sont très gentils. On vous aidera toujours. Et puis, presque tout le monde parle anglais. Ah. Oh, sure. I guess. Well, suppose I might as well get settled. Which is my bunk? N'importe quoi, ça m'est égal. Oh, now, look, enough is enough. Do you want this bunk or the other one? Vraiment, pour moi, ça n'a pas aucune importance. Choisissez vous-même. For heaven's sakes, I thought you were an American woman. Don't you speak any English at all? I... Uh, yes. Yes, of course I speak English. Oh, well, thank heaven for that. I was beginning to think that I'd wound up... Why a... do you ask? Why'd I ask what? If I speak English. Well, for heaven's sake, because you haven't spoken one word of it till just now. I... You were rattling along in French... At least I suppose it was French. I... Oh, Meredith, are you sure you feel all right? You're looking awfully white. I tried to make some excuse and couldn't. I knew what she must be thinking. I was thinking it myself. I just stood there and stared at her numb with fear. The same kind of fear that gripped me now. Only worse now. Because now I knew what must be happening. And I would be as powerless to prevent it this time as I had been the first time three months ago. Only why? Why had the doctors let me go if I was so near another breakdown? Surely they could see it coming. Hadn't they told Larry I was well enough that I'd be all right? Hadn't the doctors written him a letter? Yes. Larry had a letter. He said he had. He must still have it. But where? Where would he keep it? It's got to be here somewhere. So he wouldn't throw it away. He couldn't have. Well, Louise. No! Looking for something? Oh. I... I didn't hear you come in, Larry. Where's the letter? Letter? 
What letter? Oh, a steward. Uh, just bring that right on in here. Yes, sir. I thought you might like some coffee. Oh, Louise, you know Mr. Haskins, I believe. Bonjour, madame. C'est un plaisir de vous revoir. Well, Louise, can't you say hello to Mr. Haskins? I'm sorry, steward. I'm afraid my wife is a little upset this morning. You understand. Of course, sir. Uh, sorry to hear it, sir. If you need anything, just uh, ring for me. Now, what's this all about a letter? How could you bring that man in here? Why, well, he's our steward. I did think it was rather stupid of you not to speak to him. Really, Louise, if you want people to think you're perfectly normal, you might act as if you are. There's no telling what he thinks now. What he thinks? Or what you told him to think? What I told him to think? Really, Louise. And stop really Louising me. You're exciting yourself. So would you be if you thought... If I thought what? Nothing! Leave me alone. Have some coffee, dear. It'll calm you down. I don't want any coffee! I just want to be left alone! In just a moment, we'll return with Act Two of Suspense. Will you have some more coffee, Mrs. Nadine? I, uh... Oh, uh, yes, thank you. You're awfully quiet this evening. Not a bit of mild mare, I hope. Your husband said earlier you weren't feeling up to par. Captain, you know I never have a bit of mild mare. If I have it, it's a great big chunk of it. <laughs> yes, quite so. Well, I'm sure you've seen the last of that. A lot of other people seem to be having mild mare, though. Oh? Well, why do you say that? Well, so many empty places at the table. Oh, that? No, I'm afraid that's mostly a lack of bookings. But I thought you were booked solid. Oh, not at this time of year. We're into the off-season travel now. Oh. Well, uh, what about other ships, then? I mean, are they full up? No, not any more than we are. But then why? But why what? Oh, nothing. Uh, Captain Woodbridge. Yes? I, uh... I don't suppose you remember our coming on board this morning. Well, certainly I do. I greeted you myself. But, no, I didn't mean that. I mean, I mean, of course, I knew you would remember that. I meant... Do you... Uh, I, I don't suppose you remember what I said. What you said? Yes. I, I mean... Do you remember anything special? I, I'm afraid not. Uh, was there something you wanted to tell me? Oh, no, it wasn't that. It was... Oh, never mind. It was... It wasn't anything. Oh, Mrs. Meredith, I do hope that everything's all right. Oh, yes. Yes, everything is fine. I could have cried. What could I say to him? Captain Woodbridge, did I say anything to you in French this morning? He would have thought I was mad. Now he thought it anyway. And if I stayed in my cabin, saw nobody, said nothing. But that was exactly what I had done on the trip three months ago until the madness drove me to do the queer things that finally made them come and take me away to the infirmary and knock me out with drugs. Oh, if I had been afraid that morning, it was nothing to the fear that gripped me now. Was I going mad? I didn't know. I only knew that Larry had lied to me. Larry had trapped me into this. And there was no escape. You seem to be having quite a conversation with the captain. Wasn't anything. Tired? 
What am I supposed to say, yes? What's the matter with you, Louise? You're, you're not yourself. I'm not sure I know what myself is anymore. What's that over there? Where? Well, oh. it's your beach bag, isn't it? Now, how did it come to be there? I don't know. I was wondering where it was all morning. I'll get it. Louise, stay away from that rail. Megan, stay back. Stay back. Mary, what in the world are you what doing? Happened? What happened? What happened? Did you actually see Are you all right? Yes, yes, yes. She's all right now. Thank you. Louise, what made you do it? Larry, I didn't do a thing. Is there anything I can do? No, no, nothing. Thank you, thank you. I'll, uh, I'll get her to our cabin. Larry, when I was at my worst before, I never tried to hurt myself. I'm not trying it now. I'm sorry, Louise. You startled me. I thought... That... You thought... What do you think all those other people thought? Or did... Did you plan it that way? Oh! Yes! That would be the way to do it, wouldn't it? I don't know what you're getting here. Oh! <laughs> you don't know what I'm getting at. I think I'd better send for the doctor. Yes, Larry, why don't you? By all means, get the doctor in here. He's seen me off my nut before. He'll believe whatever you tell him. And don't worry about me. I could deny it till I'm blue in the face. He'll just say I did that before, too. But then there's no need for me to tell you all this, is there, Larry? Because you already know it, don't you? You're counting on him as an expert witness. Only to what, Larry? What are you trying to get me to do? The way you're carrying on, Louise, it wouldn't surprise me if you ended up killing yourself. You're not eating any breakfast? I wasn't here when the steward brought it in. And what's that supposed to mean? Anything you want it to. You'll get hungry before lunchtime. <laughs> it takes a long time to die of starvation. Come in. Well, good morning, Doctor. Larry, how dare you? Good morning, good morning. Well, it's nice to see you again, Mrs. Meredith. I, uh, I heard you were a little upset, and I... Uh, There's nothing uh, wrong with me. And I did not try to jump overboard last night. No, of course you didn't. I know that. I'm afraid I'm the one who jumped, Doctor, to conclusions... Naturally, it upset Louise. Yes, yes, of course. So much so, I can't get her to eat any breakfast this morning. I don't believe she trusts me anymore. I see. You see? What? You don't see anything at all except what he wants you to. Louise. You but think I... I'm going out of my mind again, don't you? Because that's what he wants you to think. Though he's far too clever to come right out and say so. Doctor, I'm He doesn't sure you... have to. A few words here and a few words there. A couple of incidents like last night and you would fall for it the way he no, knew no, you please, would. please, please, Mrs. Meredith. Doctor, I'm afraid it is my fault. I was just joking with Joking? Her. He's trying to kill me and it's a joke. Don't you see what he's doing to me? Louise, you must calm yourself. No, of course. Why should you, Doctor? You don't know what he is. I didn't know until I lived with him how cruel he is. How greedy. All I wanted was to be free of him. Louise, Three really? months ago, I thought I was. <laughs> but you couldn't allow that, could you, Larry? Allow there was the money to it... think of. You couldn't let me go and take it with me. You had to have it at any cost, even if it meant killing me to get it. Killing now, you. my dear Mrs. Meredith, you must not go on like this. You'll only make yourself sick. You don't believe me, do you, uh, Doctor? Let me, let me give you a sedative. We, we can talk about it later. And to think I would be the one to make it so easy for him. Well, ready to go down, Louise? No. Go ahead if you want to. I want to stay on deck a while. You shouldn't be wandering around in the dark by yourself. 
Then come with me. Well, I'm surprised you would want me to. I don't have any real choice, do I? Where do you want to go? Right here, by the deck rail. A nice, quiet spot. Deserted, really. It ought to suit you very well, Larry. I believe you could push me over the rail quite easily. Yes. I suppose I could. And yet it's not too far for people to hear me scream, is it? No, it isn't. But all come running. Too late, of course. So, Larry, what are you waiting for? I really don't know. Uh, am I supposed to make the first move? I don't think that will be necessary. I can't say I planned it just this way, but as long as you asked for it, Louise. Oh, Larry! Don't jump, Louise! Jump! <laughs> We both went over. That was something else Larry hadn't planned on. But I had. It was the only thing I knew to do in order to save myself. Loosening that boat gate at the deck rail. Even then, I wasn't sure I'd look through it. But I was pretty sure Larry wouldn't. You see, he couldn't swim. Not a stroke. They never found him at all. Of course, they kept me in the infirmary for the rest of the trip because they thought I had lost my mind again and was trying to jump overboard and that Larry tried to save me. I didn't see any point in trying to explain it. After all, that was what Larry wanted them to think. Suspense. You've been listening to Witness to Murder, starring Joan Loring and Leon Jenny, and written especially for Suspense by Francis Rickett. In a moment, a word about next week's story of Suspense. Haven't heard it yet? Shame. You've been missing the fun. The Carol Burnett Richard Hayes Show. Enjoy Carol and Richard five times every week. Hear them on the CBS Radio Network's Carol Burnett Richard Hayes Show, evenings, Monday through Friday. Suspense is produced and directed by Bruno Zerato Jr. Music supervision by Ethel Huber. Featured in tonight's story were Bryna Rayburn as Mrs. Blake, Mercer McLeod as the ship's doctor, Bob Dryden as Captain Woodbridge, Ronald Dawson as the steward, and Guy Rep as the man. Listen again next week when we return with Death of an Old Flame, written by George Bamber. Another tale well calculated to keep you in suspense.